Here's a really neat little DC power supply module. The output here can be from 0 to 38 volts at up to 6 amps. The input 10 volts to 40 volts. You can either use the screw terminals here or the jack there in parallel. There's an output here for a 12 volt fan. Keep the thing cool. It's controlled by just the four buttons here, the set up and down and OK. And there are three indicators to indicate when it's in constant voltage, constant current, and when the output is on. It's a compact little unit. If you have a 3D printer or need a case, you can find many designs on Thingiverse, and some of them involve removing this little switch panel, which is just on two 8-pin connectors there. So you could put that up onto uh, a front panel. It says here, Boost Buck DC-DC Converter and a lot of the documentation just refers to it as a buck, so does it boost or not? That's going to be the first question that we need to answer. Let's hook it up into the test setup and find out for ourselves. The module is being fed by my bench power supply here. That's set to 12 volts at up to 6 amps. The output then is connected to a DC load. Until it's running, the voltage doesn't really mean very much and this is the current which the load is set to at 1 amp. To start with, the module is in its simple mode. It just switches between the voltage here, we see as 5 volts. There's no indication of volts or current, but the 5 there with a decimal point in the middle is the voltage. And then when you switch it to current, you get the decimal point at the end here. It's set to a 1 amp maximum output. If we switch the module on now, we can see it's in its constant voltage mode, but there's no current being drawn. Activate the load. We now see the 1 amp indicated there and 5 volts there. Let's just check our voltage with the meter as well. Here, if we press OK, we can toggle between the voltage and the current. So it thinks it's 4.99, 4.97, and the meter gives 5.003. We're in the right ballpark. As the input is 12 volts and the output is 5, clearly it's in its buck or step down mode. Let's now stop the, the load a moment and change the voltage here. Let's make it, say, 24 volts. So then it will be boosting from 12 to 24. Now we're outputting the 24 volts. Let's put a load on. That sees 24 volts as well and 1 amp, which is the load. Notice, however, that the current on my power supply here is 2.28 amps. As it's in its boost configuration, there's no such thing as a free lunch. The power has to come from somewhere. Therefore, to step up from 12 to 24, the boost converter has to work harder and therefore draws a lot more current. Be aware of that if you're using it in its boost mode. The current required on the input is going to be much higher than when it's in its step down mode. There's nothing getting even warm at the moment, so I'm not going to connect the fan. But we can clearly see that, yes, it does operate in a boost configuration. Let's look now at it in its constant current mode. This is especially important. Perhaps you're testing a circuit for the first time and you want to make sure that the current is limited. Alternatively, you may be charging lithium ion cells or, or other batteries where it's necessary to limit the current. I've set the voltage now to 10 volts and the current is set at 2 amps. On my load here, to start with, it's set to 1.9 amps. We turn on now and look at the current. Switch the load on and we can see the 10 volts and 1.9 amps. Let's now increase the load up to 2 amps. That's where the current limit is set. We go over 2 amps. We see the light come on to indicate that it's gone into its constant current mode and the voltage has dropped, which is exactly as we expect. We back the load off and it returns to the 10 volt output and is no longer in constant current mode. So yes, that is working very well. We can see as it's not in its boost mode, the current being drawn from the power supply there pretty much equal to the load current. So far, 
with the module we've been in its simple mode. It has other features including the ability to show not only the current but also the number of watts and ampere hours. To use that feature we need to change some of the parameters. We do that by disconnecting power from the module, holding down the OK key and powering up. We see the display cycling now through 0, 1 and 2. To activate any of these functions we simply wait for the correct digit to appear and then release the OK button. Function 0, when it's active, connects the power to the output automatically. There is no switch control from the module. Function 1, when it's active, shows the power in watts and the capacity used in ampere hours and also enables the saving of voltages and currents into memory. The device has nine memory locations usable. Finally, function 2 will enable the power and ampere hour values and current to automatically rotate so that you can see each of them in turn. Firstly, let's activate function 1 so that we can see the power and capacity. I just waited there until the 1 appeared and you briefly saw the Y, which now means that that is active. So we have the voltage, power, and the capacity or ampere hours. We turn the load on, we can now see our two amps, and it's no surprise, 20 watts. And here we see the ampere hours ticking up. The power off, hold the OK down, this time releasing it at number 2. That goes to yes, put the load on, switch the output on, we can see it cycling now automatically between the different values, the voltage, the current, power and capacity. The final thing to look at then is the memory function. This can be more than a little confusing, but I think I have a handle on it now. Having activated function 1, when we go through the menus, we still have the voltage and the current, obviously. But then we have a load and a save. Clearly, load is to load the memory and save is to save it. What is confusing is that the memory location 0 is like the default setting. Whatever values you set on here, so at the moment the 12 volts and 1 amp is the 0 memory location. If you want to save different values, you must load them into 1 through 9. For example, if I now load location 1, it's 5 volts and 1.5 and amps. If I load location 2, it's 10 volts and 1.5 and amps. If I want to save a new value, say in location 2, I can change my voltage to say 15 and the current to 2 amps. Now if I cycle through and save that in location 2, let's go and load location 1, which should be 5 volts. I now go and load location 2 and it's our 15 volts. So don't get caught out by that. It is a little confusing as I say as the current values set are always in location 0. To finally demonstrate that, if I now load location 0, what's it going to be? What's your guess? It should be what we loaded from location 2, which is 15 volts but it's in location zero because that is what it's currently set to. I hope that makes some sense. For me, this is a great little board and I have a project in mind for it. For less than $20, I don't think you can go far wrong.